Hey everybody, welcome back to The Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, we're going down a rabbit hole. I'm drinking some bourbon. All right, Ben. About a year ago, you said, hey, you want to do a YouTube channel? And it's been a bit of a rabbit hole. And we, we're going to play around with the name rabbit hole quite a bit. But there happens to be a bourbon called rabbit, rabbit hole. hole distillery. And so, I so put, is this where you're going to work the term rabbit hole? Yeah, we, maybe we'll let that go a little bit easier. As, but. <laughs> in, as many times as possible. Because <laughs> I feel like that's only going to stay yeah. appropriate for so long. <laughs> that's before. right. Yeah, it could get old. Yeah. So anyway, all right, moving on. Acting a little bit more mature. Mm. Um, so one of the first bourbons I reviewed when I was doing the Instagram mm -hmm. was Rabbit Hole Destroy. I picked up a couple of their bourbons, and then we had a phone call with them recently, and so I picked up another one, and we are now going to review the Cave Hill. So go ahead and pull that over here. Bam! This is Rabbit Hole Cave Hill Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. And then we have a special appearance by, this is one we've reviewed Should before. Should we just bring it yeah, out with might it? Yeah, as well. Yeah. Bam! This one is Rabbit Hole Derringer. This is a finished in PX Sherry Casks. Yep. So you've reviewed this, the Derringer one, on your Instagram, Instagram. page pre-Bourbon yeah. Note. Right. So this is going to be our first review of any Rabbit Hole products on this show. Yeah, I agree. So we want to do both of them. Um, and we want to talk about this one a little bit because it is a tad unique. Mm -hmm. Let's talk mash bills. You like mash bills? I do. 70% corn. Start pouring. Okay. 70% corn, 10% malted wheat. I don't know if I've ever had malted wheat in anything. They seem to be really big enthusiasts for the malted grains. Yeah, and I'm not sure. I wonder what kind of a extra process that that creates yeah or what what it adds to it well we're about to find out but then they, flavor wise yeah and then they include 10 percent honey malted barley so it's a four grain yep with two different kinds of and then regular 10 percent malted, malted barley so it's a it's a four grain weeder with two different kinds of malted barley right okay interesting this is gonna be really interesting so Rabbit Hole is a newish. They've been around for like 10 years in, in Kentucky. In um, bourbon, that's pretty new, I think. It is, right. Um, and we are back. And Sorry back. for the interruption. There was an Amber Alert that came over the phone there, so that uh, canceled out the recording. We're recording on a phone. It's the high tech. High tech. Yep. That you get here at the Bourbon Note. Right, but yeah, so, so that came through and it came through on Greg's phone as well. So Yep. So what we have here is Rabbit Hole versus mm -hmm. Rabbit Hole. Yeah. Now these are gonna be quite different. Obviously the, the sherry cask is really gonna be more of a just an experience. Yeah. We're not really comparing them to each other. Yeah, there's but these I'm, two wouldn't be, I would imagine, yeah. a anytime you got a finished yeah. bourbon versus a, a regular, you know. But I'm curious about the weeder with the, the malted barley. Uh, that's I don't know, interesting. Yeah. So well, and the malted wheat and the honey barley. It's just, yeah. it's kind of a, it's a interesting experiment. Yeah, I think so. You know, and I think that from what I've seen on their website, that's kind of their jam. Yeah. They like to experiment with different kinds of grains. Um, grains. The other thing is, is kudos to them for putting all that information on the website. I love that yeah, when no they kidding. do that. That is awesome. You know, because it makes it more fun to try to. It is. Oh, it's here on the side too. It's on the bottle. Oh, nice. Okay. And these are also small batch. I don't know about this one. This one, and they, their definition of a small batch is 15 barrels. Which, which is pretty I, cool. That's would, a, that is a legit small batch. So this is a smaller distillery, but not tiny. You know, not craft. Yeah. They're actually, you know, producing some pretty good amount of yeah. bourbon. This has an interesting nose to it. I don't know if I would have guessed weeder. Not that I would be the greatest at that anyway, but. Yeah, it's only 10%, so it'd be a light weeder if, you know. So it's 10% wheat, 70% corn, you said? Mm -hmm. So 20% of this is malted, malted bar barley. Yeah, two different types. Two different but, types, yeah. Interesting. I'm getting lots of flavor. Like, it mostly spice. Um, I could see it going more <laughs> towards the say. interesting, not sweet note. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. 
But I think that high percentage of malted barley is interesting to me because you don't really get that on most bourbons. Usually that's a low yeah. amount and it's used to break down the enzymes in the corn, convert yep. starch to sugars. And yep, exactly. So, but this one, I think it might impart a bit of flavor more than it would normally. Almost, I mean, it, I don't think it's gonna be a scotch type, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, whiskey, but I think it, it will have a little bit more of a kind of a interesting. It might have some, yeah, some a little feelers of that because, you know, the malted barley. Yep. All right, let's go in for the taste here. All right. Whoa. Whoa, that is nothing like I expected it to be. Really? Not at all. 95 proof. Mm -hmm. Does that, that doesn't resemble the nose to me at all. I, I think it's a little bit more consistent. It's not- Really? It's not super sweet. I mean, obviously it's 70% <laughs> nope. corn. There is some sweetness. Like caramel notes are really light. Toffee notes are somewhat there. A little bit of barrel char, barrel spice. But there's this grain that I, it's gotta be the barley note, malted barley, honey malted barley. That is really unique. Yeah. It's like, it's got an interesting, I don't even know if I would call it the finish or like it just like a, <coughs> a feeling on your tongue. Like just, it's a- Yeah. Um, I, I really like it actually. I think I, it's good. I do too. I'm blown away by how different I'm, the, the nose is just so much different than the taste to me. Hmm. There's something in the palate that is just really unique and really different and really catching me off guard. I'm trying to figure out what it is. So I feel it's really balanced. Like there's nothing that stands out as sharp. Like it's not super sweet. It's not super spicy. There's plenty of spice. It's 95 proof and you notice it. But it's, it's nice. It's well balanced. It's got a nice long finish that I think does kind of go toward the, like the single malt kind of finish a little. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. Yeah. Um. There's just something so different here that it's reminding me of something and I cannot pinpoint it. Hmm. You know, on the finish, the late, very, you know, once you, you're done drinking it, get a tiny bit of like peanut butter. There's a, I'm almost reluctant to even say this because it might come across weird in this I, you ever have a bourbon where you feel like there's a flavor that's trying to come through and it's covered up by something else? Like there's little tiny flashes of it, but everything else in it is so completely different than that. Then you know, sure. So let me take another sip of this. Okay. I'd say at this point, now that I've had several sips, I'm really getting nice toffee slash butterscotch notes but it's almost like a butterscotch candy without the sweetness or w with very little of the sweetness. It's really, it's somewhere between a bourbon and a single malt as far as like the sweetness level. I think you really do get that malted barley comes yeah, out more than- Definitely, than your average Yeah, we're bourbon. not used to having a bourbon that has so much of it in there. Yeah. And, okay, so there's a flavor I can't pinpoint. It's a little, it's definitely different than most other bourbons and I, I don't know what it is. But it's almost like you drink it and then there's like this wave of kind of proof lifting off of your tongue kind of coming back up. Mm -hmm. The aftertaste and the finish and just even like just that aftertaste of your mouth. Do you remember when we did that Old Elk Wheat mm -hmm. and you said- I know. Yep. Do you know where I'm going with this? I So I almost made that comment. What do you think I'm gonna say? I don't want to say it. Go ahead, you know, go ahead and I'll tell okay. you. Okay, Big League Jew. Yes. Yeah. That's what I, I was going to say, like the bubble gum, because you'd said you saw a thing that Fred Minnick had, had pointed out that in um, wheat whiskeys, um, sometimes they can have an underlying bubble gum. Now this is a low, this is a weeder, but it's a low. It's very low wheat. Wheat, considering. Yep. I, I had that thought earlier, and I'm getting a couple of flavors that one of them is the bubblegum note, but it's very light. Yes, that's it, why I was saying like, very it's light. almost like it's trying to come through, like you'll get a little flash of it here and there. Mm -hmm. You know? You know in like a scary movie when they're walking through the haunted house and they open oh, up the door the and there's a little flash yeah. quick of what happened there 20 years ago? 
You know, just like one frame of like a dead body on the floor. Yeah. That's what I'm getting out of this. With the bubble gum. Oh. It's like just a little flash, like there's okay. a little bit of. So you know. another note that I'm getting, a bourbon note, is um, and you're not gonna like this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. All right. Pop tarts. Really? Brown sugar cinnamon pop tarts. It's more like the the pastry, like not the filling or the frosting, but just the pastry. It's just God, but there's a dominant note in this, and I absolutely cannot pinpoint it. Yeah. It's not like anything I've ever had before. But honestly, I really enjoy this. I, so, A, I just truly like it as a, as, as a sipper. Yeah, it's very and, unique. And it would be awesome as a, you know, share with somebody who has had quite a few bourbons and yeah. know, see what they think. You know, because there are some flavors here that are, it's absolutely a bourbon, but it's also absolutely a tad unique. So I really like it. I am a huge fan. If you weren't taking this bottle home with you tonight, if this was sitting on my shelf, I would probably sit and just drink this until I figured that note so, out and end up hammered. So it's funny that you should <laughs> say get that. so obsessive about it. That's like, one of my favorite things. And it's really not about getting drunk. It's take a bottle, like, well, there's a bunch of bottles, a good quality complex bourbon mm -hmm. and have several drinks and do small pours. But you know, just take, I do that a lot. <laughs> take a bottle of bourbon and have several drinks, small pours, and take your time and really think, what am I getting from this? Mm -hmm. You know, and really get to the bottom of does it taste like this? Does it taste like that? You know, and what childhood memory does it bring up that yeah. you, know, you sit in your corner and cry or whatever? Sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, that's I mean, that's really what tasting bourbon is. is it's not trying to pinpoint exactly what because everybody has a different experience. Yeah, which is kind of weird to tell your audience. On a bourbon show, when you're reviewing bourbon and telling them what you think it tastes like, it's just our opinion. You it's know? just your opinion, um, man. But the best way that I would I learned from watching, and I think I brought this up in a separate review, but watching the Whiskey Vault, um, Daniel had said the best way that to, that he recommends tasting bourbon and trying to pick out flavor notes is just think of what does it remind you of. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be what it is because it's not. You know, a lot of bourbons have some very similar flavors. There's some yeah. kind of quintessential bourbon notes. But there's going to be different things that different people get that, that remind them of different things. And then yeah, once absolutely. you kind of figure that out, it's just one more tasting note you kind of have in your arsenal yeah. that you'll pick out of other whiskeys. All right, before this video ends up being 45 minutes long, I let's get to really the next one. It. Yeah. So, yeah, this is good. I like this. This is awesome. All right, so this, on the other hand, is probably similar to bourbon. I don't know if it's three grain or four grain. Oh, oh. I have that. Actually, I could answer that question. Does it? It doesn't say it on the bottle. It probably does, but I can't read that. Do you want me to read it? If you want, sixty-eight corn, eighteen wheat, fourteen malted barley. Okay. Finished twice. Finished in new toasted and charred American oak barrels, and Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. Very good. Never chill filtered. Quote, as it should be. Should being in all caps. <laughs> so. Obviously going to be a very different flavor profile. Yep. And the, so they took their bourbon, which is really good. Um, I killed the bottle of the, the high gold, which is their kind of their standard Kentucky straight bourbon. Um, did, did you get some water? I did. Okay. Um, and then they, you know, finish it in a sherry cask from Spain. So this is going to be interesting. I've had it, but it's been a, a little while. So what do you think? I like, it's got a good nose. I'm not always the biggest fan of wine finished bourbons. And I would say I am. I definitely feel they're flavored slash finished. So they, I mean, it's no longer a bourbon, you know, straight bourbon at that point, but I tend it's, to like them. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's its own category. Exactly. Yep. Of whiskey, basically. Yep. Um, and it's not that I don't like them, it's just, it's not something I have a, t I, I think maybe most of the ones that I've had are on the lower proof side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never had like a cask strength. Well, actually, no, that, that burning chair, that's cask strength, and that's all that's wine true. finish. Yep. Multiple wine. Yep. Um, this one's got I'm getting a lot of lot of flavors on the on the nose. Yeah, it's got a nice sweetness to it. You you do pick up the wine. Mm-hmm. It's not overpowering. Nope. So the the wine comes across as really floral and it smells red. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. I've brought that up about whiskeys before. It has a red note to it, or yeah. it has a, 
you know, it, orange, it, the color orange, not it the... It really does. Yeah. Um, it smells red. Um, but then in addition to that, it's got a really nice bourbon kind of, yeah, fairly mature. It's not a super young bourbon. It, probably not, you know, super long age, but yeah. Let's go in for the... Yeah. It's got a good mouthfeel. A nice little bite to it. It does. What is this? Uh, 93 proof. Definitely has a nice little bite to it for 93 proof. Good density. It's a bit oily and that really like <clears throat> yeah. takes the flavors and really pushes them to your tongue and then they stick. Nice Getting spice. Kind of sweet and fruity finish with a little bit of spice on top of it, like some yep. barrel spice. Yep. It's a good combination of barrel spice and cherry. Yeah, there's, there's like a red fruit, like you were yeah. saying. It, but there's still that underlying caramel that you get too with... You know, you, you really need to try their straight bourbon. Yeah, I you haven't know, had that. These are the only yeah. two I've had of this. I've had so, this one before yep. out of this bottle with yep. you. Yep. I need to pick up another bottle of that. But, because it's, it's really good. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of, you know, basic um, bourbon, but it's, the, it's what this is before it goes into the sherry cask. Sure. Yeah, I think that's, got a, that's nicely balanced. Um, I'm kind of losing the spice a little bit and it's kind of giving way to that sweetness a little bit more. It still I, has a little bit of barrel spice to it, but. I think that's the one unique thing and probably the wine is doing some of that, but mm -hmm. it really is coming across as it quite a bit sweeter. And it's not a bad thing. Mm -mm. Um, I like, do like sweet bourbons, but it is, the sweetness is prominent, but it's, but right below the sweetness is a really nice burn. Yeah, it does. It, it maybe kicks up a little bit above its proof point, mm -hmm. which I am perfectly fine with. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a fruity sweetness. With a good red pepper note. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. I, I'm a fan of both of these, actually. Yeah, I agree. Um, price points? Um, a tad expensive. It is probably in the craft distillery kind of price range. <laughs> Attack of the yeah, a little drop came out there. I got a little aggressive, <laughs> shaking the glass. Apparently, um, I'm guessing a bit, but I think like fifty five dollar range. This one I thought was a little more expensive, closer to the seventy ish. Should I look it up? Sure. Yeah, there's just a nice. Um, I'm almost getting like a candy fruit sweetness or like frosting and i've brought up before like the uh cherry or strawberry frosting like the pink frosting on donuts or cookies around valentine's day which yeah. i love mm -hmm. um it almost has that kind of a wait you love valentine's day or frosting, the frosting. i love valentine's day too because it's my daughter's birthday oh ah, really the mm -hmm. 14th yep um 60 80. okay so at that point, you do have to make a decision on how much you want to spend. That's the only maybe downside I would say to these, they are a tad expensive. They're really good. But I think this is also a good example of you have a craft dis dis distillery. Mm -hmm. I've not had that much to drink, I promise. You just sure. stutter a lot. He was stumbling when he came over tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's trying some new things. You know, we mm -hmm. have a four grain with malted grains. That's kind of cool. And we have a Spanish sherry cask finished. Yeah. That's cool. And, and that's that, going to cost you when you're producing it. It, it for should sure. cost some money and they're freaking awesome. Like yeah. Both these are... And it does, I mean, you look at this and you say, do I want to pay 80 bucks for a 93 proof bourbon? Yeah. It drinks... It drinks... Higher in flavor than the 93 proof would suggest. For yep. sure. I will give it that. Um, I'm very impressed by both of these actually. I've had this one before, but it's so long ago, I didn't really remember exactly. Sure. Yep. And I think it was kind of in the mix of some other yeah. stuff. But yeah, I mean, if you don't mind the price point and you want to explore some unique stuff, this is cool. And I think they're doing their own distillate. Yeah, totally. So they're doing good everything. for them as a craft distillery. That's going to command a price point as well. Yeah. If you want a craft distillery that's not sourcing, you have to pony up and drop some, some coin on them if you want to experience something unique. So yeah, I would definitely recommend. Flavor-wise, I'm totally on board with these. So price point is up to you. Anyway, this has been a couple of rabbit hole products on the bourbon note. I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Cheers. <laughs>